Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever. A whole lot of stuff is going to be happening today, but I am most excited to talk about a future new product. Or at least, it's going to be a future new product if, when we test it, it works well. Before we jump in, let's thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Squarespace, and you can get started building a new website today by getting a free trial at squarespace.com forward slash forge, and when you decide to make your first purchase, you'll get 10% off using code forge at checkout. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this. Let's jump into what's happening today, because a whole lot of weird stuff's gonna happen. In this video, we're gonna be talking about anvils. There is a very special project that we've been working on. But before we get to anvils, their types, what makes them interesting, and a special secret project that we've been working on, I want to preface it all by answering a question that is very commonly asked, which is, how do you get started blacksmithing when you don't want to spend a good amount of money on an anvil right off the bat? You want to give it a go and get into it. And I want to answer this question because I don't want this video to seem like the only way to make things is by spending a good amount of money on tools, because it's not the case. As you'll have seen from the recent series that Will has been putting together about making things in his garage, you don't need a whole lot of tools to get things done, and the same applies for an anvil. As with everything, it is so much more about skill, experience, muscle memory than it is about the tools themselves. This right here is a chunk of three inch or three and a half inch round steel. This is a scrap from a local steel supplier. It's not even that heavy. It probably only weighs about 15 pounds, but I'm gonna start this and show you just how easy it is to turn this into an anvil. Here is a file. <laughs> So there we go. That is how you make an anvil with about $20 of scrap steel, buying it at an expensive price, a little bit of super glue, and a two by six piece of timber. In blacksmithing and metalworking, it is the same story as it is in every aspect of life. It's not about the tools, the equipment, how nice and expensive it all is. It's so much more about just getting it done. Is it the best leaf ever? No. Would it be better with better tools? Yes. Does it stop me from having a good time and learning skills? Absolutely not. So with that, about $21 of investment, you can get started. But let me tell you a little bit more about anvils as a whole. Here, this, this is a cast steel Brooks anvil. It's quite hard, which means you get good rebound. It does, however, have a huge hardy hole. It's an inch and a quarter hardy hole, about a half inch pritchell hole. You see it's a single horn anvil with a step and unfortunately quite a stubby and not very pointy horn. Now this anvil here is a forged anvil. This is a Peter Wright. It is one of the most famous makers of anvil there is in the world. Peter Wright anvils were forged out of wrought iron pieces, all forge welded together, culminating in a forge welded on steel face plate. This particular anvil is about 230 pounds. It features about an inch and an eighth hardy hole, and then about a five eighths or so pritchel hole. It was my first ever anvil. Bought at 11 or 12 years of age with Christmas and birthday money. I found it on eBay for 90 pounds. So this thing has certainly gone up in value a little bit over the last 10 years. Now you might be asking yourself, why Alec, do you use the smaller anvil over there instead of this larger anvil that is a little bit more historically significant being that it's a forged construction? Why do you use that one? Well, by using an anvil that is less used, you have a flatter face, you've got better edges, you get a squarer body off the side, this one here, it's all rounded over here as you can see. The edges haven't been chipped out on a new anvil like they have on this, and this one's in frankly great condition. But the reason I use this is it's generally in better shape. 
I like having a flat surface. I like being able to control what my edges look like, and I like having a pretty clean horn. And over the years of blacksmithing, I've kind of tallied together a list of the things that I wanted in a normal forging anvil to be able to make the most use out of it, enjoy it, and love having it in the workshop. And so wouldn't it just be practical if I had the culmination of that list sitting on a pallet right over there? This thing arrived yesterday in from the foundry. We spent months working on the design on this. It's been a long process to get it to this point. The foundry made their pattern, their wooden pattern. They set up their sand molds and they poured our first prototype anvil. This is a 140 pound cast steel anvil 52 Rockwell. It has a one inch hardy hole, a five eighths pritchell hole. It has all of the features that I wanted in an anvil, and the reason that it's 140 pounds is that means that we can ship UPS and FedEx ground to customers, which really significantly cuts down on the shipping cost of getting an anvil out to folks. It means you don't have to go to freight. The quality of this casting is incredible. It looks so clean. The logos came out beautifully, and of course, the proportions of this thing are exactly what we modeled. And I'm just so grateful that it looks so good. It's exactly what we were after. It's exactly it. One of my favorite things about what we were able to do with this anvil is we were able to get mounting holes in it. One of the biggest nuisances with a normal anvil is being able to actually mount it properly. So often they're only able to be nailed into a stump or you come up with a contraption like this that just loves to come loose and doesn't support it well enough. And it's all around very difficult to get it mounted to the stand very easily. Well now, you slap four bolts in that bad boy, you bolt it down and you then have this gorgeous flat surface mating up with your stand, meaning that you're gonna get as much energy as possible coming back to your hammer. I understand the irony, I still haven't bolted down my anvil stand. As you might assume by the little flag, these things are indeed made in the United States of America. So what I wanna do today is I want to tidy up this anvil, get it into a sellable condition and work out how much time that takes so that we can put that into our costing. Once we've done that, it's then time to forge on it and beat the daylights out of it with a sledgehammer to see if it breaks, because that's important too. First things first, we're gonna clean up this horn, grind down that parting line from the casting. So let's get to it. that needs using. Isn't that right, Yoko? That's right. We're good at like the forge and use the anvil because it's the best thing ever! Here we go.
give it a little bit more of a heavy workout. My heart is like at 180 beats a minute. That's incredible. Holy moly. That's a good workout. Holy moly. I've been giving it everything I can. I brought a pallet here so I could stand up a little higher. And I was wailing away on it with this 26 pound straight peen sledge. Trying to give it everything I could. Just due to the shape of any anvil, the weakest points are gonna be of the horn and of the heel. So we wanna make sure it doesn't break that. So. I gave the heel a good test by wailing on it, making that hardy tool. I want to now give the horn a good test, but since we're still in lockdown and I'm the only person here, there's nobody to hold a piece of steel, so I'm going to have to try and rig something up so I can beat on the horn some without uh, needing to hit directly hard steel on hard steel. Let's see how this does. This is tool abuse. And cold steel on an anvil like this is no good, but it is a champ. It's doing amazingly. Unbelievable. There is not a dent on this thing. Striking cold steel with a 12 pound sledge. And there's not a dent on it. It looks incredible. I'm thrilled with the first testing of this. And it's not over, there's so much more testing that needs to be done. I really, really wanna make sure that we put this through its paces. You might be wondering, what steel is this? It's a proprietary mid-carbon blend of steel that hardens quite deeply. I believe it's quite similar to a 4340 steel, but based on how it's cast and how the foundry produces it, they're able to achieve a deeper hardness and better consistency in the casting, so it's their proprietary blend that they've been using for a really long time. So it's meant to be very deep hardening, and this is specced out to be 52 Rockwell, which I feel like is a very good balance between hardness as well as fragility, because as your hardness goes up, there's an element of fragility that comes with that on the edges. Can't believe it. You know, after growing up from age 11, just loving anvils and just having such a fondness for what this tool is and, and what it can do, it is a very special thing to now have one that has this little squiggly line on the front of it. So of course the idea with this isn't just for me to have my own anvil with a squiggly mark on it, the idea is that we can get this in a whole bunch of people's shops for you to enjoy using. I feel like this is a very, very special product and if it works well after a real thorough testing and evaluation, we're gonna be launching pre-orders of this. So stay tuned, keep watching the videos because over the coming while, we're gonna be testing it, trying to abuse it, trying to stretch it beyond the limits of what it should be able to handle. And when the time is right, we'll launch a pre-order so you folks can reserve a spot for it. Thank you all so much for watching. Today's sponsor, making all of this possible, has been Squarespace. And I say making all of this possible because when I started my business, when I was trying to sell the tools that I was hand making and the classes that I was teaching, I advertised all of that and posted it all up for sale on my Squarespace website. As a young whippersnapper, 17 year old, fresh out of having left school and just trying to get this business up off the ground, it was essential for me to be able to update my own website continuously because my skills were improving rather fast and I wanted to be able to very quickly test out the market for what products were going to be successful and how I could best serve people. And so I was able to put classes up for sale on my Squarespace website. I was able to put tools up for sale and you can do the very same. It didn't take coding experience to make this happen. And Squarespace is continually updating what it is that they offer you, which means that now you can even buy your domain through Squarespace. You can do email marketing campaigns through Squarespace to reach all your fans right in their email inbox. And you can get their fantastic 24-7 customer 
service anytime. So folks, please get stuck in there while you've got some extra time. Build yourself a nice website or update what you've already got with a Squarespace trial at squarespace.com forward slash forge. If you like it, on your first purchase, you'll get 10% off when you use code FORGE at checkout. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this. Thank you guys for coming along. It's such a thrill to be able to share this journey of testing this Anvil with you. See you all very soon. Hope you stay safe. Bye-bye.